Okay, so the first thing that we are going to start with is some vocabulary. What does rate of change mean? It is a ratio that shows how one variable changes with respect to another. Have we heard rate of change before? Mm -hmm. Have we heard of rate of change before, guys? Some of us? Yes? No? Okay. What's another word for rate of change? It's on there. Slope. Okay. So on our linear graph, this is called the slope of the line. Okay. Slope of the line. So slope and rate of change are synonyms, okay? So slope is written as a ratio. A ratio is a fraction of the vertical change, which we call our rise, to the horizontal change, which we call our run. Now, for linear functions, this remains constant for any two points on the same line. So if I pick two points on a line, you pick a different two points on the same line, we will get the same slope. Okay, slope remains constant for our linear functions. Okay, slope is written as a fraction in simplest form. All year I've been saying on our warm-ups, don't write those fractions as mixed numbers because we want them as a fraction in simplest form when we're doing slope. We don't want to try to graph a mixed number for our slope, okay? Uh, does anyone know what variable we use for slope? Do y'all remember from last year? M. M is our variable for slope. Okay, now there's four different types of slope we can get. Our numbers can be what kind of numbers? Think of numbers on a number line. You have what kind of numbers and what kind of numbers? Positive and negative. So if we have a positive slope, my line is going to be going up from left to right. We read graphs just like we read words from left to right. So on the left, I'm low, and I'm going up. So that's a positive slope, okay? Then we also can have a negative slope. My negative slope starts high and then goes down as we read it from left to right. Okay. What numbers in between negative and positive numbers? Zero. zero. We can have a slope of zero. Zero slope is a horizontal line. Now, there's a couple different ways you can remember this because these last two are the ones we sometimes get tripped up with. Okay, which one's zero, which one's the other one? This can help me make a Z, right? For what? Zero. zero. Okay, this horizontal line can help me make a Z for zero. Okay, horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Then we have, what's the opposite of a horizontal line? A vertical, a vertical line. Now this is an undefined slope. Now 
Now this vertical line can help me make a U for undefined. Good? Okay, so from last year, slopes what over what? Do we remember? Rise over run. Rise over run. That's your M. And M is what again? And I put rum as I'm saying. <laughs> run. There we go. Um, M is slope. Good job. So slope is rise over run. Now again, there's more than one way to find your slope. We can start at different points. We could all start at different points and we would get the same slope. I always like to start with a bottom point and go up, okay? So, looking at this first example, do we all see this bottom point? Okay, it might be kind of hard to see on up here, but look on your notes. Do we all see that bottom point? Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go from that point up to this top point. When we rise, we are only going vertical, up and down. You can't slant. You can't go along the slant. You go straight up. Okay, so I'm going to count. How much am I going up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that puts me right there. Is that on the same line now? So I went up seven. So that's a positive seven. So I did my rise. Now I need to do my... Run. So I went up seven, so now I'm at this point. Now I'm going to go one, two, three, four points to the right. If I go to the right, what kind of numbers are to the right, guys? Positive. Positive, so that's a plus four. Does it matter if you put plus or minus for these numbers? Yes, because yes, it's telling me directions. If I'm doing my vertical and I write a plus, it means I went up. If I write a plus when I'm going horizontally, that means I went to the right, okay? Now, could I have started up here and gone down and then to the left? You can choose any two points and you can go in any order you want when we're doing slope. So I could have started up here and then gone down seven, which down would be a okay. negative, and then go to the left, which is a so what's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. Is that going to be the same as this? Yes. Okay. So my slope is M equals 7 over 4. Can 7 over 4 simplify? No. There's my answer. Now, Slope is not that difficult, guys. We are literally counting how much do you go up, how much do you go over, okay? But sometimes we work quickly and we make silly mistakes. Once you get your answer, go back and check my graph. This line is going how from left to right? Up. So it's going up from left to right, meaning it should have what kind of slope? Positive. Did I get a positive answer? Yeah, yeah. Yes, a positive slope, okay? Looking at number two, what kind of slope should number two have? Negative, because if I look at my graph from left to right, it's going down. down. Okay, so I should get a negative. Now again, I always start with the bottom point. Personal preference. I always start with the bottom point. So I'm going to start down here. Okay. I'm going to rise. One, two, three. Three, and now I'm there. So I rose three. So that's a plus three. Because going up is positive. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to the left. If I'm going to the left, what kind of numbers are to the left? So negative nine. So my rise is positive 3, and my run is negative 9. So my M is, can 3 over 9 simplify? To what? And it's a negative 1 over 3. And 
there is my slope. Did I get a negative answer? Yeah. yeah. Now, let's check this, guys. I could go up one, because that's what this is, right? This is my rise, so I'm going to go up one, left three. So up one, one, two, three. Oh, is that a point on my line? Yeah. Go up one, one, two, three. Is that another point on my line? Yes. Okay, so my slope is correct. If I rise one, go left three, it's giving me more points on my graph. Good? Okay, let's look at number three. I'm going to start at my left point. Because I can't start at the bottom because there is no bottom if they're on a horizontal line. Okay, can I go up at all? No. No, so my rise is zero. And I'm going to run one, two, three, four to the right. So that's a plus 4, because going to the right is positive. Well, what is 0 divided by 4? So my m is 0. Also, guys, remember, what kind of line is this? Horizontal. It can help me make a z for 0. Okay, all horizontal lines have a 0 slope. Okay? Now let's look at the next one. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. I went up five. Do I need to go over at all? No. no. So zero. I just went up five and now I'm at my new point. What's five divided by zero? You can't divide by zero, guys. Five divided by zero is not zero. It is undefined. Undefined. You don't have to write this, but I'm going to show you something that's going to maybe help us know if we divide by zero or not. We can divide by zero or not. Okay, have y'all ever seen that it is okay to have zero on top in the numerator? Have y'all seen this before? Or no, it is not okay to have zero in the denominator. So it is okay to have zero on top. It is no, not allowed to have zero in the denominator. Okay, this might help us. Zero divided by something is zero. Something divided by zero. That does not work. You cannot do that. It's undefined. Okay? We good? Okay, let's go to the next page. Looking at number five, what kind of slope should number five have? Positive, because as we go left to right, it's going... Again, I always start with the bottom point. One, two, three, four, five up. So that's a plus five. Then one, two, three to the right. Going to the right, is that positive or negative? Positive. So my M is five over three. Does 5 thirds simplify? No. no. There's my answer. Okay, let's look at number 6. Start at the bottom. What kind of slope should this one have, guys? Negative. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going left 1. So going to the left is negative. So I have 3 over negative 1. So what's my slope? 
negative 3. Guys, do you have to write your slope as a fraction, or could it be a whole number? It can be a whole number, okay? If your denominator, if your run is 1, you're going to see it as a whole number, okay? But we need to know when we get to graphing that if I have a slope of whole, of if I have a slope that is a whole number, that doesn't mean my run is zero. All whole numbers have a denominator of what? One. Okay, so you can always write a whole number as a fraction. But when we are identifying our slope, if we can write it as a whole number, we're going to write it as a whole number. Okay? Let's look at number seven. Again, what kind of slope should this be? Because from left to right, you are going up. Start at the bottom. One, two, three, four, up. So plus four. Then one, two to the right. So that's plus two. So my M is four over two, which is what? What's 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. 2. Guys, when the bigger number's in the numerator, it's not going to be a fraction. Okay? So my slope is 2. Okay, we're going to do one more together, then I'm going to let you all do a couple on your own. Okay, so let's look at number 8. Start at the bottom. What kind of slope should this be? Negative, because it's going downhill from left to right. Start at the bottom. One, two, three, four up. So it's four over. And then go one, two, three, four to the left. So that's negative four. So my slope is negative one. Okay, I'm going to tell you the ones I want you to do on your own. Okay, I want you to do 9, 11, 14, and 16. 9, 11, 14, and 16. Do those on your own. So, now we are going to look at another way to identify our slope. Okay, we're not always going to be given a graph. We might be given ordered pairs. So we are going to now look at the slope formula. The slope formula works when you have ordered pairs. Okay, so the slope formula is used to find the slope between two points. I'm given ordered pairs. Do you all see this x1, y1? Those ones are not exponents. Those are subscripts to identify your ordered pair. This means the x value of my first ordered pair, the y value of my first ordered pair. Then x2, y2, this is my second ordered pair's x and my second ordered pair's y. Okay? So our formula is m for slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Guys, I promise you, this is not a super hard formula. You're subtracting two numbers in the numerator, subtracting two numbers in the denominator, then simplify the fraction. We make a lot of mistakes, though, because you're substituting four times. The way to do this right is label your ordered pairs before you substitute. Okay? So I'm going to look at my ordered pairs here, and I'm going to label my ordered pairs x, 1, y1 and then x2 y2 now would it matter if I flip flop my ordered pairs and I said this is x2 y2 and this is x1 y1 
No, it doesn't matter. The only thing I can't do is say x1, y2. I can't say this is my first point's x value, but my second point's y value. Because they're paired together. So if I identify this as point 1, they both have to have a subscript of 1. If I identify it as point 2, they both have to have a subscript of 2. Okay? Another common mistake is we write x1, x2, y1, y2. How do you write ordered pairs? x, y. Okay? So it's always x, y, x, y. Okay? So now we are going to write this out. m equals y2. Well, what? We just label y2. 3. Three. Minus y1. What we just label y1? One. Over x2. What we just label x2? Four. Minus x1. What's x1? Three. What's x1? One. one. Good. All I did was I replaced all four of my variables with their values. It matters where you do your substitution. So again, label your ordered pairs. Always, always, always. So now we're going to simplify. What's 3 minus 1? 2 over what is 4 minus 1? 3. Can 2 thirds simplify? No. So that's my slope. We awake, Morgan? Guys, I promise you, you want to make sure we're paying attention today because if you have a good understanding of slope, linear functions are going to be pretty easy. If you don't understand slope, you're going to struggle this unit and next unit. Okay, we need a good understanding of slope. Okay, next one. Label your ordered pair. X1 y1 x2 y2 then I'm substituting in my formula m equals y2 which is negative 2 minus y1 which is 4 over x2 which is 10 minus x1, which is what? Minus negative. Okay, notice how I have double signs here, guys. There's a minus because that's in the formula. Then my x1 is negative, so that's why I have the negative. I have double signs, okay? Again, the minus is there because that's the formula. The negative is there because that is my y1 value. My y1 is a negative number. So what's negative 2 minus 4? Over. What happens with my minus negative? So what's 10 plus 2? 12. Okay. Does negative 6 over 12 simplify? Mm -hmm. To what? Okay, so I've heard four wrong answers. I appreciate the participation. But we all have calculators on our desk, right? So let's maybe type it in. Do you see what I'm saying? Guys? This is not super hard, but I've heard four wrong answers. Okay, so let's use our calculators. All of us. I don't know why we aren't trying to use the tools we have. You typed in negative 6 divided by 12. Calculator only will give you right answers if you type it in right. And we get what? Negative. This, your fraction. And what do you get? Then you used a minus sign instead of a negative. It's a negative 6 over 12. So I might always put the negative out in front. So negative 1 over 2. 
and that is my M. Guys, do you see how you could do all this work and then make a silly math calculation error? Don't do that. Don't do all the hard work and then get the answer wrong because we're struggling with simplifying our fraction. Okay. Next one. Let's label x1, y1, x2, y2. So my formula is m equals y2, which is what? Negative 5. Negative 5, very good. Minus y1, which is what? 5, very good. Over x2, which is what? Negative Minus x1, which is what? Again, we have double negatives. It's okay. So what's negative 5 minus 5 more? Negative 10. What do I do with my double negatives? Make it a positive. So what's negative 8 plus 4? Negative 4. Can negative 10 over 4 simplify? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, simplify it more. They're both even. If both numbers are even, it always can simplify. Positive 5 over 2. And that is your M. Okay, are we okay skipping number 4? Okay, let's go to number 5. Label X1 Y1 X2 Y2 So then I get M equals I'm going to circle the one that I did for you. Thank you. No, you're good. I appreciate it. So our formula is Y2, which is what? What's Y2, guys? 9 minus, what's Y1? Is that my pen? No, is that my pen? I am. You're sorry. throwing my colors off. I'm sorry. It's okay. I appreciate I only you. I four because I want them to have the majority. And was that they're doing fine? Yeah. Okay. I'm doing the activity now. Okay. Thank you. So Y2 minus Y1. What's Y1, guys? Nine. Over. What's X2? Three. Three minus. What's X1? Five. So what's 9 minus 9? Zero. Zero. What's 3 minus 5? Negative 2. What is 0 divided by negative 2? Zero. zero. Remember, it's okay to have 0 on top. You get 0. So my M is 0. Okay, we're going to do one more together. Let's look at number 6. Label your ordered pairs. X1, Y1. X2, Y2. M equals, what am I going to write? 5 minus 8, because Y2 minus Y1. Over... Negative 7 minus what? Negative minus negative 7. So what's 5 minus 8? Negative 3 over. What do I do with my double negatives? So what's negative 7 plus 7? Is it okay to have 0 in the denominator? No. Remember? Remember, no, N-O, no, not allowed to have zero in the denominator. So what does this mean? Undefined. Go 
good? Okay, I want you all to do 8 and 10 on your own. 8 and 10 on your own. Negative 3 halves and 0. Notice how when I'm writing my slope, I'm writing the number equals m, or m equals. If you answer these and you just put 0, or you just put negative 3 halves, you're going to get points off. I want to stay in the habit of writing m equals the slope, m equals the slope. Do we have questions over either of these? The two negatives morph into one big positive, so there's no more negatives. Okay, minus a negative is the same as just adding the number. So negative 4 plus 4 is 0. How'd we do? Thumbs? Uh, uh, uh. How are we feeling about slope? Okay-ish. Okay. Let's flip. We are not doing a ton of the more examples. We're only going to do two. Okay, and we are going to do number 15. So go to number 15. Okay, notice how now it's telling me the slope, but it, I need to find one of my values of my uh, ordered pairs. Okay, we're going to follow the same exact process. X1, Y1. X2, Two. But now it also tells me my M, so label M as your M. So when I write my formula out, I'm not going to put M equals because now I know what M is. What is M? So I'm going to put negative 9 halves equals Y2, which is what? Do I know the value of Y2? No, so I'm going to leave it just Y minus y1, what's y1? Negative 4, very good, over x2, which is what? Minus x1. Are we okay? All I did was substitute my values in. Instead of putting m equals, I put what it tells me the actual slope is. And then y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we're going to simplify this. What happens to my double negatives in the numerator? Turns into a positive. So this becomes y plus 4. Can you actually add y and 4 to combine one term? Make it one term? Mm -mm. Now in the denominator though, what happens with minus a negative? Turns into a positive. So what's negative 5 plus 3? Negative 2. Okay. So I no longer need this middle guy. So I now have negative 9 halves equals y plus 4 over negative 2. So I'm going to move my slope over here. Now when I rewrite my slope over here, where do you think I want that negative to be? In the numerator or the denominator? And let's look over here. Is my denominator positive or negative? Negative. negative. So I'm going to put my negative with the 2 to make it match this denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this on the right side as 9 over negative 2. Okay, so I no longer need any of this stuff. When you have fractions, guys, if the numerators... Sorry, if the denominators match, what do you think that means about the numerators? They also need to match. match. So right now, do my denominators match? Yes. These are equal to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my numerators equal to each other. My denominators are equal, so I can set my numerators equal. So I have y plus 4 equals 9. Now I want to solve for y. What am I going to do to solve for y? Subtract 4. And I get y equals 5. There's my answer.
Now we can check ourselves. What's 5 plus 4? 9. nine. What's negative 5 plus 3? Negative 2. So did that give me negative 9 halves? Yeah. So it works. Okay. So let's do number 16. Then we're going to be done with our notes, guys. And we're going to have 30 minutes to do our homework. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And then here's my M. So I'm going to write M equals, but my M is negative 1 half, so I'm going to put negative 1 half equals. What's Y2? 3. 3. Minus, what's y1? 2. Over, what's x2? Minus, what's x1? So it's 3 minus 1, or 3 minus 2. Can I actually do 6 minus x and combine it? No, because they're not like terms, so I'm just going to write 6 minus x. Okay, so I simplified my middle fraction. Okay. Over here, is my one positive or negative? Positive. So over here, I want it to be positive. So where's that negative going to go? To the bottom, to the denominator, to the negative, or to the 2. So I'm going to write 1 over negative 2. So my numerators are equal to each other. Therefore, my denominators need to be equal to each other. So I'm going to write 6 minus x equals negative 2. What am I going to do to get x by itself? Now be careful. When I drop down my x, what's in front of the x? So negative x equals negative 8. What do I do next? Uh, divide, by a negative. divide by a negative 1. And I get x equals 8. Now you can check yourself. What's 6 minus 8? Does that match? Yep. We good? Those were a little bit harder, right? I will tell you, you don't have any of those on your homework. Okay, that's why I only did two of them, y'all.